Hello my friends, if you like my work please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can, the link is in the description below. Continuing work on the diorama I finally put the model in the right position and glued it to the base. This may be surprising for you, but I used PVA glue to make the model stick well to the surface. The first reason is the main material of the base and as you remember I used the foam, so the use of some aggressive glue could damage its structure. Secondly, this glue gave me a lot of time to properly set the model and I didn't to hurry up. Thirdly, this glue did the job as a seal for the water that I will be pouring on the base in a moment. Tracks that are visible in the picture also had to appear on my base, of course. I fixed two short pieces with pins and covered them with glue. It may not look very aesthetic, but it does the job and as a result it will be completely invisible, so I didn't bother to fix these elements too much. When the model was sitting properly, I glued the turret firmly and using the previously imprinted place in the ground. Leaving the model for a while and giving time for the glue to dry, I started to prepare the figures. At this stage I needed to set them on the mat to see how they will present. To tell you the truth, I don't have many options and in my opinion this is the best setup I could come with for these figures and for this surface. Once I knew where the figures would be, I started to apply a second layer of mat. Of course I used the same product from VMS. I was wondering about the trucks and some visible mapping of the tanks slide on the uneven terrain, but on the other hand it could have driven directly into the bomb crater. All the time I was hesitating over the final appearance, but I decided that it will stay in the form it is now without coming up with strange justifications and undefined appearance. I filled large gaps with a sponge so as not to waste the product on plugging the holes. It passed the test in 100%. Having couple seconds I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support my activity. Massive thanks guys! Please don't forget that you can be one of them. It's very easy because now there is a chance to enter this superb group without pay a penny for 7 days free trial. This way you can check whether you like what I publish for my patrons or not. You can surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other media models, read the articles, watch the videos with no adverts and enjoy other benefits. Just try for free. Ok, going back to work I repositioned the figures and made some footprints. Not much and actually could have done more. Well, nobody is perfect. I also attached a piece of towing cable to diversify the surface of the mud. At the back of the vehicle I threw some crates imitating the crew's abandoned storage. In addition a carelessly spread tarp on the rear and a little one lower will add drama and more different colors to the whole appearance. I made the rope from a piece of wire pulled from a thick cord. Its advantage was an interesting braid that imitated a rope well. The size was good too, not too thick but not too thin either. Of course after gluing it I painted it in a light core and did a delicate wash to emphasize its structure. To improve the appearance of the mat I sprinkled it with fine sand and stones. No big deal, but it added variety to the mud structure. 
I put the stones in the mud and flooded the whole thing with sand and ballast freeze. It was enough for everything to stick properly and not fall off when turning the stand. The first mud color was Dump Earth from AK Interactive. Perfect for this mud in my opinion and the product soaked into the structure nicely and gave a very good shade. It was a mistake to paint the bottom of the puddle because I did it mindlessly forgetting that it's enamel. The foam was slightly damaged but luckily it wasn't too much. Muddy ground diluted with a small amount of tap water is the second color of the mud. I applied it primarily in the holes, but in some places it was the dominant color. To make a puddle I used the product from AK Interactive. The first layer was about 3mm and after a short fight with air bubbles I left it to dry. Generally they are the biggest problem because you can see them very well on the surface of the water. However the ones that were left and I couldn't pull them out will be covered with the next layers. The color of this product is perfect for creating puddles and reservoirs like this. I poured the second layer not straight from the container but first pouring the resin into a plastic container to check if there were no air bubbles there. So slow pouring also helped to avoid them. Another problem has arisen. After drying the resin shrank a bit leaving on slightly edges. It didn't surprise me at all and I started to wonder what to do about this problem. The solution turned out to be very simple and in a moment you will see what I did. One note, after pouring the resin you need to work on it, helping it flow into all nooks and crannies. Because as it is known where it's not needed, the resin will of course flow without any problems, but in places where it needs to settle naturally, of course there is no such intention.
Alright, pouring 3 layers took me about 36 hours in total because after each layer I left the whole thing to dry. When the last layer was already poured I decided to add some variety in the form of dry leaves. These laser cut pieces are perfect for enhancing a body of water. First of all, I covered minor imperfections with them, but I also started to build the right look of the whole thing. It's worth remembering that they usually gather along the shores, forming a compact mass. They float on the surface, but also below the surface, so it's worth submerging them to make a little 3D effect. In my opinion, I managed to get a nice effect and the water took on life. Despite the nice work with the leaves, the edges don't look good. As I mentioned a moment ago, the solution turned out to be very simple. I cut the edges of the balsa together with the excess of the resin. Surprisingly, it was still quite flexible. It was hard to cut, but it didn't matter much because in a moment this unevenness will be covered by transparent water gel. Thanks to it, small waves will be created on the entire surface. Despite the fact that the water in the picture is rather smooth, I decided on such a solution. Firstly to cover uneven edges and secondly to give it a bit of interesting look. Sometimes you have to add a bit of yourself to improve the reality we want to show on the model. Applying this product is very simple. Irregularity is the key to success. After drying on one layer, you can add another to enrich or complete the surface. While we are at the water, I have a book for you about building water dioramas. To get it traditionally, subscribe to the channel, like this video and write a comment called Demons PL. The winner will be announced on Monday. Good luck! Some trivial work on finishing the base also needs to be done. Black paint with PVA glue is ideal for painting balsa. The glue combined with the paint clogs the micro pores in the board. Two layers is enough. And the frame was previously painted with black spray paint. Here too, two layers do the job. Figures covered with a black primer are already waiting for their turn. I don't consider myself a super figure painter, so I won't bother you by showing how I do it. To paint the camo that is on each of the four figures, I used the AK book about Wolf SS uniforms. I tried to add some variety, so I used different camo patterns based on the pictures in this book. The only thing I will draw your attention to is the mud weathering I did on the figures using the same products that were used for painting the mud. I think it was a good step because thanks to this the figures are properly unified with the ground on which they stand. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. And about the book, the link to the bookshelf episode is in the description below. Setting up the characters of the story wasn't difficult. Each has a glued pin that holds it in the right place and facilitates possible disassembly. The ground is not as hard as stone, so sticking a pin is not a problem. At the end I decided to prepare a plate with the name of the project stylized as a piece of armor. 
Of course I painted and weathered it as on the model and as a result I have a nice looking element on the base. Ok, the project has come to the end. I am very pleased with the final result. I managed to get a nice atmosphere and it seems to me that in this case a small number of elements is the added value of this diorama. Let me know what do you think about it. Of course, if you like what I do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click like and write a comment. This will surely be very helpful. For my next project I have prepared Takom's headser with some nice upgrades, so prepare the snacks and drinks for next Monday. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!